Morning folks, hope you're keeping well. This is take three and I've come to the conclusion that what I'm trying to share today is difficult. <laughs> oh dear. And it is, it is difficult. It's difficult to explain at least. No big thing, this is a casual day for me today. I'm not even concerned about picking any shots up particularly. I'm not looking for any calendar shots or any portfolio shots. I'm just happy to be out, to be honest. And I've come out to a specific place with a specific intention. I'm not gonna get into any great detail. I'm just gonna share the basic concept. And what it is, is when you've had a good day somewhere, when you've been to a place and you've had fantastic light, you, you have a memory, like a lasting memory of how beautiful it was. It's been with me all week from last week when I had the foggy conditions here and I'm back in the same sort of location as last week. If I picture that environment, I picture it in fog now. I don't picture it without fog and it's, uh, it's not its normal state. So what I'm doing is I'm going to visit the same rough area that I was in last week, but with a couple of twists. And, and the twists are that I'm going to be looking for fresh paths, new routes, routes I've never taken before so that I can get a new view, a new perspective into that woodland and around that woodland, areas I've never ventured before. That's important to me today. I want to see it in fresh eyes. I need to build up a, a different perspective. The other really important thing to me today is this light. We've got a, a blue cast to the sky, sun's just risen. Many of the leaves have fallen now from last week. A lot of the canopy is completely bare. Just a few remnants hanging around, beautiful as they are. So it feels extremely different. It feels like a completely different place, actually. And this is valuable to me. And the thing I want to share of value is that difference, is the perception that I build up of seeing an environment in stunning light versus seeing the same environment in challenging light because you don't just build an understanding up about that specific environment but you also build up an understanding of how light affects this general environment so how different is it how much of a, a challenge is the challenging light how brilliant was the brilliant light it affects how I then take this information into post-processing. This is really important too, to me anyway. So it's, it's a lot more than just changing my memory of a place or giving me a more realistic view of it. It's also about expanding your knowledge, expanding your experience of light in this environment. Forget the place I'm in, just how light affects these subjects how light affects this terrain. And by visiting the same location under two stark different light conditions particularly, you can interpret that better. Huge statement, but I'm sure you can. But it takes to come out and think along these lines to really soak up that value, I think. It's still okay just to come out and just shoot again. I mean, obviously that's great fun and it's great experience. But to come out and pay attention to it, to actively think about the differences, how different that tree looked the last time I shot it, that's where the gold is. That's where the, that's where the sprinkles are. And that's what today's about. I'm just going to take a chilling walk back down to that rough location. I'm going to head off into the forest. I'm going to find some new paths I've never been down before, get a few fresh perspectives. Got my gear, if I see any compositions, then I'll, I'll bring you back, explain my thinking. But fundamentally, today is about differences. How different is it? And I suppose that's worth a mention as well. It doesn't stop at today, this, this trip. This will be something that lasts me all week. So I shot a lot last week. <laughs> I shot a lot. I'm, I was close to 500 shots last week. And by bringing away a dozen shots from today, even if they're only simple passing shots, handheld, then that, that's going to give me a nice comparison in post-processing. I can compare subjects, I can compare light. And the, the thing about that is that you can compare how post-processing works under different light conditions in this environment. 
So the learning curve is quite a steep one, but it's rich. It's rich right from the very start of your day, seeing what happens with the light as the sun comes up, to passing through the same sort of area you were in before with great light conditions, to develop a knowledge and a, an understanding of how light affects the environment, and then tapering off down the side of the, uh, the, the learning curve, you've got the whole post-processing experience of seeing how post-processing can work in different environments. Of course, I'm only talking about traditional, authentic photography. I'm not talking about any artificial intelligence and that sort of junk. Right, enough waffle. Crikey, three attempts that took this morning. Oh, he's on my case, bird man. So uh, I'm going to take a wiggle and mooch on down into this forest before it's time to leave. Have a look around, pick on a few trees, see what's going on. Pay attention to the difference in the environment. Try and grab a few shots of some of the subjects that I passed last week. And uh, I'm quite excited to go and have a look at it. So as we make our way down, I'll uh, find a composition and I'll bring you back. I'll see you in a bit. Just seen a car driving through the trees, that's very rare. I just recorded a little bit of footage of the two split trees, They've got huge, huge boughs on them. I shot them last week spread apart in a, in a really wide pano <laughs> and just looking at them then it's like how on earth did I do it because they're not that far apart, <laughs> they're not that far apart. It's as though they've, they've, everything shrunk which is healthy, it's a healthy thing to do this is because it's reminding me to realise how light plays with us, how we, we see things differently in different light. My memory of this place, even though I've been here many, many times, but my memory of it from last week to this week, so wrong. I mean, it's just so wrong. Incredibly, incredibly beautiful. And we have some contrast this morning that we didn't have last week. So some of these big fellas like this chap here, look at this. Oh my goodness. I mean, I can't do the, the sense of scale much credit, but he's a monster, absolute monster. That branch there, just there, I would think six foot is about here. If I went and stood at the side of it, I'd be nowhere near touching that, that limb. So you can see roughly how big he is. He's massive. <laughs> and then just to the right here, which is where I'm going to try and take a shot next. I'm going to get really close in on this guy and try and grab some little, there's some little gold bits left on the dark trunk with the green moss. We've got some trees in the background, so hopefully I can cut the sky out. Just try and find a composition in there somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere there. <laughs> so... Yeah, let me grab a shot of this chap and uh, I'll pop it up now rather than at the end. I don't imagine we'll have a huge gallery of images this week, but uh, I will pick up one or two. I'll take his shot, pop it up now, move on, try and find a composition to talk you through my thinking and I'll see you in a little while.
been mooching about, as I said I would, and I've also been off onto different trails, trails I've not wandered down before, that's given me fresh perspectives into the, this particular part of the woodland. If I, if, I mean the summary for this video this week is really, if I add up my experience of last week to my experience of this week, that gives me a more fully fleshed interpretation of this environment. I'm better able in the future to make more qualified decisions about coming back here because I've seen it at its best and seen it at its average, I would say, certainly not its worst. The sky has gone, uh, it started out, we had a very strong blue colour uh, to it and it's become more grey. It hasn't got brighter, it's remained quite flat. So conditions aren't great at all. There's, a, there's not a whole lot of light getting in here now. There are some interesting little compositions. It's quite intimate stuff though. I'm not finding anything, anything on the scale of last week. Last week was just monumental, but yeah, it's, it's really, really interesting. And I, yeah, I employ you, you know, if, if you haven't done that before, if you haven't had a brilliant day and then gone back a week later and had another go at it in poor conditions, it really is, it really is a great experience. Anyway, that's the gist for the week, but we want a composition, don't we? And how's about this fella? He's just, well, he's kind of not a split personality. <laughs> Oh, let's use the footpath. So, he's been braced for a while. You can see his, his overgrowth. I don't think that's compression that's done that. I think that's growth, because this has been here a while. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a, there's a definite contour inside his, his outer bark there. And the fissure runs from the very base of this huge, I mean, I, I can't get my arms around this fella, not even close. And the fissure runs all the way through. You can just see some daylight up there. It's completely split, two halves, right the way up to another band at the top. And we've got all this huge amount of growth from this year. These limbs is at an artificial support put there under this this limb. Obviously that, that weight would pull this thing apart. It'd literally just separate and end up, end up on the floor. But being braced as he is, adds more longevity to him. And this year, his canopy has been fabulous. It's been absolutely spectacular. Long may it continue. So let's take his photo. Let's get a shot of the old chap. It's been difficult to get a perspective on him because as we look at it, you've got all this brightness all around him. So wherever I shoot, I've got this white background. I'm not, as I said, I'm not looking for anything fantastic this week. I'm just happy to be out here getting a better understanding of this environment, how it responds to light. So compositionally, I've, I've centrally composed him. I took a couple of vertical shots to try and stitch a panorama just to get a nice wide view of him here. But then because I've got a lot of the sky in that kind of a format, I decided to twist my camera into its natural orientation landscape. And I've shot one image along the base of him, ensuring that I get this fella in the background because he's nice background detail. So we've got one shot there and then another shot there, which gives me less sky, less brightness. And it looks something like, so that's the top half of the composition and that's the lower half. And that will give me that kind of a square crop perhaps, including this fissure up the trunk, the band leading the light eye off. And it's, as I say, it's nothing special, it's just beautiful. Really, really beautiful. And on top of that, the sun's coming up from over that direction, so the brightest light we have is where I'm shooting, which never helps either. 
So I think what I'm going to do is maybe just grab a couple of little intimate shots, mooch my way through, constantly monitoring where I am, how different it is, find a couple of new more trails and probably bring you back for one last little composition and uh, for this week we'll call it a wrap. So I'll dig one more out, bring you back, explain my thinking and uh, catch you in a while. See you in a bit. Just got told off for taking somebody's photo. <laughs> two, two ladies jogging past, a bit camera shy. Right folks, I, um, I've kind of come down to the natural conclusion for today, the way that I've uh, walked. We've got silver birch over here, stunning. Uh, there is a fence line there, so I can't, I can't actually venture up that way. I have to go up and work my way around the back, but for another day that one. Really, mission accomplished. We've just got some glints of the sun coming out there. Might find its way down in a bit, but you can get a vibe, you can get a sense, can't you, of just how grey it is and how, <laughs> how different, <laughs> how different it is from last week. Really today, if I was coming out here looking for shots, uh, it would be intimate stuff. I'd be looking for the last little bits of curled up fern or contrast between silver birch limbs and, oh boy, sun. <laughs> the sun just coming in. Oh man. <sighs> oh, look at it lifting. Wow. That's amazing. So much cloud, it's going to be very short lived. They'll just be these little tiny bursts and yeah i mean i could have spent i could have spent more time here and i could have come out in the hope of the sun <laughs> look, at, look at how it's changed just that tiny little bit of sun coming through look at the silver birch now look at that <laughs> what a contrast between the gray sky and the silver birch how fantastic it's the shot of the day that is, I just get the sensation that if I pick my tripod up by the time I get there the sun's going to go back in again. <laughs> it's already going behind a cloud. Anyway, look, the point of this week's video is to share that top secret, top tip. Good week, come out on the following week when it's not so good and pay attention to it. Do some com comparisons in your mind's eye, find a few new trails, check out bits and bobs stuff that you've not seen before, try and get fresh perspectives. I've got one last little composition here on this. It is a charming tree. If trees were charming, this would be Mr. Charming. Might be his name. Another ancient. I'll show you inside in a second. Isn't he just wonderful? How old he is. All the uh, wormholes where they've started to chomp away at him. This gnarly old bark, how beautiful it is. And then inside, it just gets even more gnarly. This is where you're right up there. <laughs> Fabulous, fabulous tree. Really, really old. Really, really tired. Ready to put some slippers on and kick his feet up. A bit like me today. I am feeling it. My back is thrashing. Moan, moan, moan. So, let's get a composition in. I was right. Just in a few seconds, look, the sun's completely gone again. We literally just had moments of it. There'll be some more in a bit. There seems to be some space up there. So as the sun comes up and the cloud waves through, I think there'll be some more breaks perhaps, but nature of the game. Right, this composition. So, tree, tree. And I'm shooting it portrait because I'd like to make the most of this little tiny bit of where there's been some foot traffic going up to the front door. And it starts in the bottom left hand corner of the frame 
works its way gently into the, the opening there. That sits roughly on the right hand third where the bulk of the trunk leads up and out actually it does bend off up to the right see there it goes up and out so when it's on the computer hopefully you'll see that curve so that's the path coming in leading into the entrance up and out the frame with all of this bushage tree branches it's it's oak actually and they're all just leaning into frame bringing the eye back into the central focal focal point which for this shot is bottom right hand thirds we don't have a huge amount of sky so the highlights aren't a problem and whilst we don't have any great light it's a reasonable exposure shooting at 1 15th of a second at f4 at exposure ISO 100 and I'm focused in on the left hand side of the uh, entrance way there Round about there. There he goes. Yes, mate. So on that note, folks, I'm going to pop up any other shots that I've got from today. And next week, we'll do something completely different. So till then, thank you very much for watching. Please take care of one another. And if you can't be good, just be careful. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.